Hello everyone. The Bible gives us many warnings like that. Like Peter gave concerning Paul's writings. Unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of people seem to think the warnings are for everybody else. And they don't apply these warnings to themselves. Because of this warning, you would expect people to treat Paul's writings with great care, but they don't. It just so happens that the verse we're talking about is in a context where Paul is warning the Corinthian Christians by using Israel as an example. Israel had blessings from God, spiritual food, manna from heaven, spiritual drink, water from a rock, and yet God cut them down for idolatry. And Paul gives some other examples of their sins and how God severely judged them. And Paul is telling the Corinthian Christians, just because you have spiritual blessings like water baptism and the Lord's Supper, doesn't mean God won't do the same to you. God will judge you for your sin. So, let's have a look at this passage. 1 Corinthians 10.4, they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And so you see Trinitarians just reading this verse, and they have a vague idea what the context is about. And so they'll say, see, Jesus pre-existed. There was a pre-incarnate God the Son. So we're going to see why this won't work and what Paul is really talking about in this passage. First of all, take a look at verse 9. Sometimes when Trinitarians make this claim concerning verse 4, they'll try to buttress their claim with verse 9. Neither let us test Christ as some of them did and perished by snakes. He's talking about ancient Israel. And they'll say, see, Jesus pre-existed. There's a big problem there, though. Some manuscripts read Christ, but the best manuscripts have Lord, not Christ. Trinitarians seem to think their personal desires and biased opinions are useful evidence. When it comes to these manuscripts, they're not. Unless you can absolutely, without a doubt, prove that your manuscript is the authentic one, you got nothing. Zero. You got nothing. Dreaming up all kinds of justifications doesn't cut it. You have to have absolute proof or you have no evidence whatsoever. And Trinitarians can't seem to get this through their head. So I want to read this through. Try to be patient because you have to read basically almost the whole chapter through to completely understand what Paul is talking about. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers... We're all under the cloud, and they all passed through the sea, Israel. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Baptized? Paul is already using the language of typology right there. They all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual food drink. Again, he's using the language of typology. For they drank out of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock 
was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. And this is the important part to understand this passage. For they were strewn about in the wilderness. God cut them down. Now these things occurred as types of us, so that we would not lust after evil things as they lusted. Do not be idolaters like some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to ink and drink and got up to play, or were involved in revelry or whatever. This is the golden calf incident, where Aaron made a golden calf for a bronze calf when Moses was up on the mountain. Notice he's talking about they sat down to eat and drink. This is kind of the central idea of this whole thing here Paul is talking about, eating and drinking. Neither let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did, and in one day 23,000 of them fell. God judged them. Neither let us test the Lord as some of them did, and perished by snakes. And do not grumble, as some of them grumbled, and perished by the destroyer. These things happen to them as types. Some of your translations might say examples, but a type is something more than an example, a typology. It's like a pattern, okay? It's not like an example to follow. It's a pattern. When they cross through the Red Sea, this is a pattern or a typology of Christian baptism. These things happen to them as types and were written down as warnings for us on whom the ends of the ages has come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear, or what you are able, but will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. Notice what Paul is talking about. He's talking about how the people of God, Israel, had fallen into sin and they were severely judged for it, especially their idolatry. And notice how he's saying this to the Corinthians to tell them, yeah, God gave you things too, but he'll judge you for your sin just like he judged them. And then in verse 14, the next verse, <clears throat> Paul says, Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. When you see the word therefore, ask yourself what it is there for. It's The reason it's there is so that you will draw a connection between what he just said and what he is about to say. Because of everything I just said, regard this or do this. Flee from idolatry. Don't be idolaters like the Israelites were. I speak as to wise men. You judge what I say. Is not the cup of blessing we bless as sharing in the blood of Christ? Remember how he was talking about spiritual food? Is not the bread which we break a sharing in the body of Christ, spiritual food and spiritual drink. Since there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. What do I mean then? That a thing sacrificed to idols is anything? See how that's still what he's talking about? Or that an idol is anything? No. But I say that these things which the Gentiles sacrifice... They sacrifice to demons. He's talking about food sacrificed to idols. They sacrifice to demons and not to God, and I do not want you to become sharers in demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord 
and the table of demons? Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? You can't commit adultery, in other words. You can't play with demons and be a follower of Jesus at the same time. You can't serve Jesus and serve demons. No one can have two masters or he will hate the one and love the other. It's very important to see the context of what Paul is talking about here. To fully grasp what he's saying in 1 Corinthians 10. Let's go back to the context. Do not be idolaters. The people sat down to eat and drink. What were we just talking about with communion or the Lord's Supper? Eating and drinking. And got up to play. What does Paul say up at the beginning of the chapter? Spiritual food, spiritual drink. You see all that? This is very important to see how he's talking about this eating and drinking and he's got as an underlying theme food sacrificed to idols. He started this back in chapter 8. Now concerning things sacrificed to idols we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge makes arrogant but love edifies or knowledge puffs up but love builds up. If anyone supposes that he knows anything, he has not yet known as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by him. Therefore, concerning the eating of things sacrificed to idols. We know that there is no such thing as an idol in the world. In other words, they're not real. And that there is no God but one. See, the idols aren't real. There's only one God, one true God. For even if there are gods, whether in heaven or on earth, or indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from who are all things, and we to him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and we through him. Next time you read 1 Corinthians 8, 6, Keep in mind what Paul is talking about. He's talking about food sacrificed to idols. However, not all men have this knowledge, but some being accustomed to the idol until now eat food as if it were sacrificed to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Okay? So way back in chapter 8, Paul began talking about this food sacrifice to idols. And when we get to chapter 10, he still got this on his mind. Do not be idolaters like Aaron and the people of Israel. The people sat down to eat and drink food Remember, Paul is talking about food sacrificed to idols. Food you would eat that was sacrificed to idols. And notice what he said. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Verse 14. And then he goes on to talk about the Lord's Supper. And, does, and he says, isn't this a sharing in the blood of Christ? Isn't this a sharing in the body of Christ? Spiritual food, spiritual drink. Are not those who eat the sacrifices sharers in the altar? See, if you eat the sacrifices to idols, you're sharers in that altar. What do I mean then? That a thing sacrificed to idols is anything? Or that an idol is anything? No, not really. No, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God, and I do not want you to become sharers in demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Remember when God gave his commandments? He said, you shall have no other gods before me. And why was the reason for that? 
because God says, I am a jealous God. Well, the same is true of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't serve Jesus and demons at the same time. It's, it's like a form of adultery, idolatry. It's interesting that they're, they're so similar, the words adultery and idolatry. Because in a spiritual context, they're, they're basically the same thing. Back to 1 Corinthians 10. Notice how he talks about being baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, water. Just like water baptism. They all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank out of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Okay? And that rock was Christ. First of all, think about this. Was God the Son? was following Israel around? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Or was Israel following their God, being led by their God in the wilderness? You know, what do you think was going on that Israel would look back once in a while and see God the Son shuffling along behind them? What are you thinking exactly when you interpret this verse? Baptism, spiritual food, and spiritual drink. These were types, typologies. Notice how Paul says that. Typologies of us who have water baptism, Christian water baptism, spirit baptism. They ate spiritual food and drank spiritual drink. So do Christians. See, he's drawing these, drawing these analogies. To show Israel, or to show the Corinthians, pardon me, that Israel had these things, and God severely judged them. So that the Corinthians can see clearly, yeah, we have these spiritual blessings too, but like Israel, we can be severely judged too. If we commit idolatry, and we do things like share the cup of demons and think we can share the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. And we'll end up in idolatry. These things were types. Baptism. Baptism into Moses through the Red Sea. Spiritual food. Manna out of heaven. Spiritual drink. Water from the rock. So they drank out of the spiritual rock that followed them. Well, where do we find this in the Bible? Well, we find this when Moses whacked God with his staff, according to Trinitarians. Because they're trying to claim that rock was Christ, God the Son. And there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and they grumbled against Moses and said, Why, now, have you brought us up from Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What shall I do to this people? A little more, and they will stone me. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pass before the people, and take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand your staff, with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, Exodus 17. They drank water like we drink water, but the water miraculously came out of this rock. 
And Trinitarians are trying to say, that rock was Christ. So Moses whacked God the Son to get water out of him, apparently. And Moses also whacked God twice when he was only supposed to speak to him to produce water. Take the rod, and you and your brother Aaron assemble the congregation and speak to the rock before their eyes that it may yield its water. So Moses was supposed to command God the Son to yield water. Kind of order God around there. You shall thus bring water for them out of the rock and let the congregation and their beasts drink. So Moses took the rod from before the Lord, just as he had commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before the rock. And he said to them, Listen now, you rebels, shall we bring forth water for you out of this rock? Out of God the Son, you think? Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. So according to Trinitarians, he whacked God twice with his rod, or his staff, and water came forth abundantly. And the congregation and their beasts drank. Something might be wrong with this Trinitarian interpretation, don't you think? Struck the rock. That rock is literally Christ, is it? Maybe not. Maybe that's never going to make sense. Maybe it's a typology of Christ. Maybe that'll make sense, because that is what Paul is talking about. Typologies. Baptized into Moses, spiritual food, spiritual drink, just like you Corinthians have in the Lord's Supper. Types, typologies. They had these things, yet God judged them for their idolatry. And that's a typology for you Corinthians too. If he judged them, he'll judge you. Types, patterns, typologies. Now these things occurred as types of us so that we would not lust after evil things as they lusted. Do not be all idolaters like some of them were. What Paul is saying is we can, we, we've got something they really didn't have. We can look back at them and see what happened with them. And, and we can see what not to do. Or face the consequences. Same idea happens elsewhere in the New Testament. Here's one example. Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. Jude 1.5 Why is he telling them this? Same reason. He's reminding these Christians what happened to Israel after he had saved them out of Egypt. And he's saying, this can happen to you too, after saving you out of your bondage. Paul is saying the same thing. He's telling the Corinthians that they shouldn't suppose that just because God saved them, out, saved Israel out of Egypt and gave them spiritual food and spiritual drink, that he will be pleased with them if they resort to sin. God destroyed them for sin, and he will do the same to you, Corinthians. Just because you share in baptism and the Lord's Supper doesn't immunize you from judgment for sin, especially idolatry, just like all those blessings God gave Israel did not immunize them from God's severe judgment. Spiritual food, spiritual drink. The language of typology, because that's what Christians have, spiritual food and spiritual drink. The Lord's Supper, 
And that's why Paul says in verse 14, Therefore, and he goes on to talk about the Lord's Supper. And he reminds him, Don't share in the cup of demons and the cup of the Lord. So we have this typology, Israelites on the left, Christianity on the right, baptizing to Moses, baptizing to Christ, spiritual food manna for Israel, Lord's Supper, bread and wine, body of Christ, blood of Christ, that's what Paul says, a sharing in the body of Christ, a sharing in the blood of Christ. That rock was a type of Christ is what Paul is saying. Israel was severely judged for sin. Point, you Christians will be too. That rock was Christ. Yeah, a typology of Christ. God the Son wasn't whacked by Moses' staff to produce water. They drank from the rock. The rock that Moses whacked with his staff. Do you want that to be Christ? Come on. Use your head. Israel was severely judged for sin. Christians will be judged for sin too. This is Paul's point. And that rock they drank from is like Christ for Christians. Just because they had water from the rock didn't mean God wasn't going to judge them. Just because you have the blessings of Christ doesn't mean you're not going to be severely judged if you commit to sin, especially idolatry, because that's kind of the main thing Paul has in view. Paul's point is that baptism in quotes, into Moses, is a type of water baptism into Christ. And the spiritual, in quotes, manna and spiritual, in quotes, drink from the rock are a type of the Lord's Supper. So when he says that rock was Christ, he is speaking typologically, and he means that rock was a typology of Christ. The rock gave them water to drink. Jesus gives us spiritual drink. Living water. Typology. That rock was Christ. A typology. And here are some verses about our spiritual drink. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. From his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That's a different drink than the Israelites got. They needed water for their livestock. Okay? And this water that came out was good for their livestock because Moses whacked the rock. No, he did not whack a pre-existent God, the Son. Sorry. It's all about typologies and warnings about idolatry. Context, food sacrifice to idols and idolatry in the context of the Lord's Supper. And whether you should eat food sacrifice to idols and, and do that and then try to have a Lord's Supper also and think you can do both. And Paul's saying, no, you shouldn't do that. Cup of demons, cup of the Lord, bad idea. Look how Israel was judged for their idolatry. Pretty serious. Israel was blessed with typologies, which Christians are blessed with. Baptism into Moses, spiritual food, spiritual drink. These are types, typologies of Christian baptism in the Lord's Supper. Israel was given these things, but God cut them down in the wilderness for idolatry. You Christians have spiritual food and drink, and God will likewise judge you, Corinthians 2, if you commit idolatry like they did. The Israelites drank water from the rock, and that rock is a typology of Christ. That rock was Christ. He's saying 
that rock um, signifies Christ for you Corinthians. They didn't have Christ. The Bible tells us they didn't have the promises Corinthians had, the Corinthian Christians. So do not commit idolatry. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too, or you will provoke the Lord to jealousy. So when you digest all that, and chew on that for a bit, it, it should become pretty plain for you that Paul is speaking typologically there at 1 Corinthians 10, 4, when he says that rock was Christ. And if you read in your Bible, in Galatians also, Paul says the Jews were under the law until Christ came. Now that Christ has come, you are no longer under the law, basically, is what he says. Galatians chapter 3. Paul's pretty contradictory if he was telling people that there was a pre-existent Christ following Israel around in the wilderness. But Moses didn't whack God the Son with his staff, did he? To get water out of the rock. We know that's not true. And if we just appreciate what Paul is talking about in context, it becomes pretty clear what he means. And if you take that warning from Peter about misunderstanding Paul to your own destruction, it might help you a lot if you apply that to yourself instead of everybody else. God bless you.